I'm Tamara Holder, and this is Sports Court. Does the NFL have a painkiller problem? The DEA is reportedly investigating into painkiller use in the locker room, and this comes on the heels of a pending class action lawsuit filed by more than 1,000 retired players who accuse the NFL of giving them prescription drugs all the time without knowing the long-term risks. With me in studio is attorney Dominic Romano to talk about this possible lawsuit or criminal investigation. Yes. So the, so the DEA is, is investigating. The According DEA is, reports, a, right. Right, is, is a criminal agency. Who are they going to go after? Are they going to go after coaches, trainers? What, what's going on here? Presumably that's what's going to happen. Uh, that, that is the usual upshot of an investigation like this. Uh, the team's key personnel, some certain doctors that were writing prescriptions for this stuff in bulk, it seems. We have you know, players being handed, according to reports, drugs in envelopes, not even with warnings on them, and uh, breaking into medicine cabinets and just having at it in terms of uh, uh, medication. And it seems kind of like this Anna Nicole Smith, Michael Jackson issue where doctors are just giving these players pain medication. But the difference is, is that they have to perform on the field. So do you think that maybe some of these injuries are related to their addiction to pain meds? The evidence seems to point in that direction. I mean, you have 1,300 players, according to the, the attorneys, coming forward and, and talking about various ailments, various problems. One player played with a broken foot for a substantial portion of the season, suffered permanent nerve damage uh, to his feet. Uh, another player playing with a broken leg. This medication puts them at ease, allows them to play, and the NFL either turned a blind eye or engaged in a culture of coercion, as Marcellus Wiley said in an interview. Right. So they have these trainers that are on the field and in the locker room during the games. And you go in, you say, I'm hurt, and they give them whatever they need to give them. They go back out and play. And should, there players, be an, in, should there be an independent uh, doctor or trainer that's hired by the NFL? How do you fix this? Well, you would think so. The NFL, as we know, is a highly centralized league and, and exercises a great amount of control. And typically, players are trained from a very young age to put team above self, right? So on one hand... They want to go out there and play the game at all costs. If they're breathing, they want to play. But it's up to the teams and the medical professionals to put controls in place and cautions in place and at least warn them. You know, the problems that are coming to the fore is that these players weren't warned about the addictive but qualities. What about, what about individual responsibility? We're talking about these concussion lawsuits. We're talking about pain addiction lawsuits, painkiller lawsuits. What about saying, this is, this is Vicodin, this is addictive. I'm not going to take this. I'm you're playing a young this man, game. you're a player. But you're right? a man. But you're a man, sure. But everyone around you, it's, it's, there's no I in team, right? Everyone's saying, we gotta, we gotta be ready, we gotta play the game. You're only, in the NFL, you don't have that many games in a season. And there is a culture of playing, let's play the game, and there's a culture of put yourself second, put the team first. So and play so the if, game, get paid, and then sue the NFL after you take the pain pills, after you get, get, get hit in the head because the idea is you have no other options in life? Look, that is a valid argument in, in as much as at a certain point the players maybe should have asked some questions, but the fact is the league and the teams that should have known better, that have a high profit motive to keep these players playing, did not step in. And, and we're issuing, according to reports, drugs in envelopes, without warnings, without any kind of temperance, it seems. So, look, what's going to get a team, or a league, a sports league in this case, a large business to change its practice? Maybe some intervention. Personal responsibility but only goes so far. There's a difference, don't you think, between... Some legal a, intervention. Between, there, there's a difference, though, between a concussion lawsuit where you see the actual damage after players have died, they do the brain scans, versus addiction and being predisposed to addiction. And, and how, do you, how do you quantify what actual harm occurred? That's an excellent question, but think about this. Last time you and I were talking about the NFL stance on marijuana, very strict stance. Right. In fact, almost zero tolerance. Multiple offenses, they're gone. They might, some of these players are choosing uh, marijuana over money and might never play again. But when it came to prescription drugs, as recently as a few years ago, 
have at it. Right. There's something wrong with that, and there's something deeply inconsistent with that. It's like Pez, which we're going to have after the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Sports Court, and we are adjourned. Have a good day.